All right. Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Andre Van A Bunch of you know me because you might have taken my class. Some of you don't know me. That's okay. I am the department chair for the Department of Informatics, which puts on this capstone course. Um, I want to welcome everybody. I usually like to start with where is the sponsors? Where is the people who provide the project? I see some, right? Thank you all, because there, there literally is nothing more important to our students and their resumes than what you have just provided them. When we talk to our alumni, it's unequivocally this course that they come back to and the experience that they have. Whether you, in the end, had a prototype or not, whether you got your goals met, they did because they learned a tremendous amount about teamwork, working with other people, learning how to listen, um, learning how to communicate, and all sorts of other kinds of skills that are a little bit different than being in your team as a, as a class team or just taking your exam. So, so thank you all for what you're doing, and, and please keep them coming. Hopefully your experience was, was wonderful. Um, two, where's all the students? There you are. All right. <laughs> So who's done after this course? Wow. Yay, right? <laughs> really for many is the last course they take, together with one or two other ones usually, sometimes three. Those are people who really like to get out in their free. Um, so thank you all also for going through this experience. We know that we're tossing you in front of some situations that are perhaps unknown a little bit different, um, that are requiring you to adapt and sort of step up. Um, but as I said earlier, when we hear back from our alumni, this is often the course that they remember. So I hope that in retrospect, a couple of years from now, you can actually look back and say, that was really valuable, I learned a lot, and now I'm putting that um, towards my career. And then last but not least, there's also friends and family and siblings maybe. Anybody? <laughs> parents? No, no, not a single parent in the room, not a single sibling in the room. I see some people going, I am not sticking up my hand and letting a single person. So that's all oh, there we are. Oh, Thank yeah. okay. so, you. That's right, pat yourself on the shoulder. Um, so you can see what your actual kids or friends or family have been doing and, and, and why they've spent their time in UCI and what they might have been learning. So, so thank you friends for being here and hanging out with us. Um, I'm just going to get out of the way. I didn't run this course. It's actually Professor Ziff, Hadar Ziff over there. Hadar? Oh. Um, I want to introduce Hadar Ziff, who has, or many of you actually know him, of course, because he's been studying for the classroom. Um, he's been perfecting this course for, for many, many years. Every year we talk and he goes, I can do better. Um, and so we try to we try to bring the improvements and et cetera. But he's going to be the master of ceremonies. Um, I just am tremendously thankful that you always own this course, um, helping all of our other instructors with, with their project courses as well. Um, and I think we should give him a hand and then let him run. Thank you, uh, Professor Andre. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I've been teaching this class or similar for quite a while. So yes, we are perfecting it from one time to the next. And certainly the students get a chance to uh, tell us what they think about the class through an evaluation process. And of course, I want to hear from all the sponsors, uh, past, present, and future, also your feedback. It, does, it is taken into consideration. And we'd like to think that we have, uh, or we are improving from, from one year to the next. Uh, it is also true that we now have sort of more instructors than just myself in the, in, in the sort of the, the bucket list of instructors who are uh, teaching this class. Uh, we have a, a incredibly growing enrollment in the department and in the school. And I will say uh, a word in a moment about the different majors and how this is all related to what is happening here today. Uh, but generally speaking, we now have uh, at least uh, three professors, myself included, who can teach either this class or uh, the version of the class that goes on for one quarter. So uh, uh, let me tell you about that next. I am stalling a little bit, if you haven't noticed, because we're trying to see if our Dean Marius will come and say a few words. So I'll talk about the, uh, you know, the NCAA bracket and things like that <laughs> for about five minutes. 
And if he doesn't show up, then we'll go into the student presentations. So first of all, as the MC, just guidance for what's happening here today in the next couple of hours. They're very simply divided into two parts. The first part is happening now, and that's where we sit here together in this room on actual <laughs> chairs. And uh, there will be nine or ten student presentations, uh, primarily from the teams who have worked with me for, for two quarters. So they are effectively finishing the class that started in the fall. Uh, they've been together with each other and with me from September of 2017 until today. So it's been a long time. And it's finally coming to an end. This is the first time they've seen me shaved for a while. <laughs> Right? So we, we, all, we all work hard, myself included, to make this happen. Uh, after the student presentation, after the last student presentation for this part, we will have some sort of rolling videos in the background, and we'll use that time to uh, uh, clear the, the chairs out of the center of the room. Not the guests, but the students can help me with that part. And after the chairs are clear, this becomes basically uh, a science fair, uh, a, a true showcase, where you have about 11 or 12 stations to visit. We'd like you to visit all of them. It's not that many. And uh, check with the teams. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can keep uh, telling me your impressions. This team is great. This team is not so great. I could have done this project better myself. Uh, I'll take any and all feedback as you go through the stations. And that, that stays open until about 7. I think in the email invitation we had a couple of different times. One was 7, one was 7.15. That's roughly, I think most of this will, will close shop starting at about 7 p.m. So, so that's the guidance for today. Uh, this is the room. The, the food that will come will be outstairs on the patio on a nice day, right? Who knows what the weather will be tomorrow, but today it's perfect. California weather, so we're all good. Um, bathrooms and... Stairs and elevators are all out this door and through the hall. So that's hopefully all the logistics. Uh, I promised to say a few words about the, the school and how it's related to what's happening here today. So information and computer science became a school around the middle of the previous decade, around 2005, probably off by, by a year or so, but that was about the timing. And it's actually a pretty interesting thing that it's uh, uh, one of the only UCs, if not the only one, where computer science is actually a separate school. Uh, how is that possible, you may ask? Um, there, there's much bigger UCs, UCLA, UCSD. In most of those schools, computer science is still under uh, uh, either electrical engineering, or it's a department, or it's related to math, or it's related to some other arrangement, but it's not actually a school of computer science. <laughs> Perfect timing to introduce the dean of the school of computer science. All right. <laughs> dean Marius will say a few words of welcome. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, not only the students obviously work here all the time, <laughs> but our, uh, our sponsors and uh, industry affiliates who are visiting and uh, hopefully we'll have a great time uh, looking at the posters, the showcase uh, posters uh, at the end of the quarter. Out of curiosity, uh, how many, Hadar, how many posters do we have this time around? A dozen? Just about a dozen. Just, just about a dozen. Okay. Maybe 11. Maybe 11. Okay, that's great. Uh, and there is food afterwards. There is some, right? They already know about the food. Okay. <laughs> the two most important things. Where's the food and where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, got, we got all the faces covered. So uh, I should let you continue with the program. And I'm really, I will be making the rounds myself. So I'm not escaping. I will be, I will be back here in a few minutes and, and uh, attend the presentations and making the rounds, looking at your, at your posters. So it's great to have you here and, you know, so I will um, I will interrupt between every couple of teams very briefly, just uh, if there's any other announcements or to let the next couple of teams know. They already know the order of teams by email, but I'd like to remind them. 
We also don't have uh, an operational microphone at the moment, so we'll just be speaking from here and speaking very loudly. I always tell them to think about somebody that they dislike, usually me at this point, and use that voice to project into this room. So the first team, team ID. Hello everybody, we're Team ID. My name is Nathan. I'm Rizzi. I'm Abby. I'm Tiffany. I'm Nelson. And real quick, show of hands, who just parked at APS? How many people? How, how was it? How was parking at APS? It sucks. Horrible. Horrible. Exactly. Horrible. It's absolutely terrible parking at APS, especially on regular school days from 10.30 to 3 p.m. during prime time, basically. Uh, parking there, you, you'll probably be going through each floor, going all the way up to the top, and not even finding any parking space available. So our solution is to create an IoT parking monitor system. Uh, basically, the system uh, will retrieve live data and uh, show live data of uh, parking statuses in the parking structure. Um, how it works is it will retrieve the parking spot uh, data, uh, send that to the uh, edge device, uh, and then the sensor will send that data to a cloud server to store that data there, and then send that for visualization on a web dashboard. The first component of our system is the Android device. We are using an Android phone as an edge sensor, and to do that, we are using the camera and we are using pixel change detection in order to monitor whether or not the spot is occupied. The second component of the whole system is the cloud server. We need to build a cloud server to transfer data between two clients. The cloud server is able to read and write large data files. The third component of our um, application is the web dashboard. The web dashboard displays if the parking spot uh, is, uh, is occupied or not, and that is through the data retrieved from the edge sensor. The server sends the data to the web dashboard in the form of a JSON file. For our team challenges and solutions, first uh, is the system integration. Things we divide into three small teams, so we have to have the clear communication between each other. And the second one is the edge device connection to the server. Uh, so we decided to change from the processing to the feedback.js. And finally is the uh, code efficiency. So everyone is working on cleaning up and optimizing the code. Yeah, and what did we learn, basically? On top of the technical skills, we learned uh, really to uh, our work breakdown, uh, really taking responsibility for the work that you uh, bring to the project as well as the Internet of Things, um, you know, the power of it, what it can do in our future, in our generation, um, as well as communication and time management, and being able to really uh, tackle obstacles that come up at any time. Um, with that, basically our demo booth is in the back, so be sure to check us out. Thank you. of your health care? By 2022, according to the Zebra Technologies, 98% of healthcare systems will be on mobile devices with a focus on patient engagement. This was discussed at the Future of Healthcare 2018 event held in Las Vegas earlier this month. One of the biggest points they had was patient engagement, which is giving the patients, all of us, the tools they need to better take control of their health care and engage with their physicians. What are those tools? And that, that is where Identify Tech comes in. We have been developing an app to give you the tools that you need to take control of your health and be able to streamline the process. No more mountains of paperwork, no more hassle in trying to reach your doctor or schedule an appointment. Our entire process has been to eliminate the three biggest problems we have, from the massive works of paperwork, where you can upload your documents and signatures, be able to easily get a relation and even a quick diagnosis from your doctor through a messaging system, as well as be able to quickly and easily book through a request appointment system. All this in a single application. So our sponsor had a series of requirements that he wanted us to fulfill, and the first of those is a stylistic home screen that reminds <coughs> users of appointments. With this, we want our patients to be able to immediately see when their next appointment is. 
This ties in with the next with the next requirement of requesting appointments with an easy to use interface. The purpose of this is so that patients can easily log into our system and request an appointment immediately. This takes out the need to physically call your hospital or visit them in person. In the same idea, the next requirement is to message physicians and counselors in times of need. This is done so that the patient can easily get a status update, a possible diagnosis, or even fill a prescription right from the comfort of their phone without having to go to the hospital. Lastly, our sponsor wanted a, a functionality that allows patients to electronically sign signatures and upload documents. Again, this, is, this was done so that patients no longer have to physically go into the hospital just to sign a form or show their ID. So there were definitely a lot of lessons that we learned from this project. The first is that work that we have definitely expanded to fill the time available. And we think that working on project management and skills in the future will help us a lot. Second is that software development time is very difficult to estimate. There were some bugs that took a very long time to fix. And it was hard for us to determine those beforehand. And we think that more extensive test suites could help with that. Third, we learned the importance of code readers using libraries and frameworks really would have helped us speed up the development process a little bit more. And finally, we learned a lot about Xcode script and app design in general, and we built an app basically from scratch, learning a lot in the process. And that's all we have for today. If you guys want to come check out our application, we actually do have it functioning, so you can actually come hold it. You can actually use it and actually uh, be able to upload, message, and communicate with one of the doctors that we'll have in our application. Thank you.
Um, some of the non-functional requirements that we wanted to meet were um, optimizing performance, um, ensuring accuracy, um, having scalability, and reliability of our systems. So these are some of the major challenges that we had over the course of the project. Firstly, scheduling, working in a group of five, um, it, it, we were constantly finding scheduling conflicts, so it was difficult for us to find the perfect time for our, for our own group meetings as well as our on-site meetings at, at Sengen office. Scope was also an issue initially. Um, initially, the, the scope of the project was too big and we had to find a way to fit it into our time span. Learning, learning new tools was also an issue. Tools like, like Docker, AWS, and Golang, most of us were not familiar with it at all. Um, and as arguably the most difficult challenge would be integration, since we all worked on different different parts and pieces of the, of our overall Boom filter system, uh, it, it was it, it was really confusing for all of us to come together and and figure out how these components would fit together. For our lessons learned, we we learned the usefulness of working in an agile environment, producing fast paced and fast paced work and getting constant feedback on it really produced the best results for us. And also, our, our team dynamic is probably one of the most important things for us. Um, we, we, we need to figure out how to communicate and collaborate with each other well. And that communication between each other, as well as with, with, the, with our sponsor and our engineers, um, that has really helped us to solve most of these challenges. And just to wrap this up, I'm going to share with you some of our results for this uh, concept. Um, we found that. Um, the head of miss ratio or whether or not something is in the subscribe the unsubscribe database does affect latency when using the boom filter. And the num in, in terms of when the boom filter will be useful compared to just straight querying to the database. Um, when you have in a thousand like in a payload size of one thousand email, um, when you have around seven hundred for lower values that are in the database, the boom filter will take its effect and faster than just straight Overall, thank you for listening. Hope you visit our about the relation between rising mortality rates and delayed treatment. After reviewing about 3.7 million patient records, it was shown that mortality increases 1 to 3 percent per week of delay. Furthermore, it was shown that in recent years it has taken even longer for patients to begin receiving cancer treatment. In order to combat this, we need the right doctors at the right time for early diagnosis. And that's where we come in. We're working with Neogenomics in order, in order to streamline the scheduling process so that they're good and able to focus on the important things, which are patient diagnosis and treatment. So if our project goals and requirements, our first was to design the pathology calendar. You can see that in the spreadsheet right up there. They're actually supposed to be four or more, but you kind of get the idea that the information is really spread out. And we wanted a newer, a cleaner way of visualizing all of this data. And one of, one of the ways we wanted to do that was to filtering. So we can ask questions like, how many doctors do I have working my Houston campus versus my Lisa Bayo campus? And second was to automate the PTO uh, through the electronic framework because the doctors aren't on EVP. So we just want to uh, take the doctors, um, we, we, we want to make them less of the emphasis and put the emphasis more on the PTO uh, electronic framework. So like with any other large software engineering project, we ran into a few obstacles throughout the course of the software development life cycle. The first being that <coughs> Due to the nature of our education and the nature of the work that Neogenomics does, we were rather unfamiliar with the data set that they, we were supposed to work with, so we need to go and quickly familiarize ourselves with it so we can know what our stakeholders wanted from it. Secondly was that our project scope was rather large for um, this project. Uh, because our application revolves around two frameworks, a PTO interface and a calendar interface, 
that essentially require two separate uh, but concurrent software development life cycles, each requiring their own requirement solicitation sessions, their own development sessions, as well as their own testing sessions. And finally, as we move to the second half of the project, you need to go and move people away from the requirements engineering process, which was rapidly becoming obsolete, and move them onto the development team, which meant that we needed to go and get those team members up to speed on the code as well as the tools we used. Um, so for the lessons learned by doing this project, first of all, we have learned a lot of, about how to utilize everyone on team's expertise. And we also get experience in learning and using new technologies such as AWS and React. Um, and our communication skills also got improved through communicating with the, within the team and also with our sponsor. Um, and finally, by having the agile process, we were able to learn like how to break the project down into sprints and then how to be efficient with time in order to meet every deadline. Awesome. Thank you guys. And our posters in the back right if you have any more questions or want to see our product. In the case of the product design courses here at UCI, that's a time-consuming commitment that requires the professors to work year-round searching for potential sponsors. Once they finally have a list of potential sponsors, it becomes a complex balancing act for the professors because they have to successfully coordinate with the sponsors via email, making sure they have everything they need for the first day of class. Once the first day of class actually comes, the sponsors have to be lined up and ready to go to give their timing of project presentations. Meanwhile, the students have handed out these papers to wait which are expected to fill and make informed decisions about from the five minute presentations. Finally, the professor has to go home and by the next lecture class, out of the paper surveys, he has to make predictions. As you can see, this process is tedious, unorganized, and stressful. Uh, with our seed based project, we want to streamline and improve everyone's experience with the project design course here. So before we worked on zip base, our professor's systems were not that good. It had an email-based scheduling system. It had limited coordination between classes. It had no long-term data collection, and all its surveys were done on paper. But after Zipfreeze, things improved a lot. We now have an online scheduling system, administration tools and systems. We have a pot past project archives, and all our <coughs> surveys are now done online. All right, so for Zipfreeze, we had to use a lot of tools, resources, and languages. For our front end, we mainly use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. We also use Bootstrap because it provides, um, provides like, a nice to use root system as well as being aesthetically pleasing. We also use jQuery because it has many convenient plugins. For our back end, we actually contacted the ICS help desk and they provide us with PHP uh, MyAdmin as well as a MySQL. And then we also managed to get a Apache uh, server, so that, that's where we hosted our website. Finally, we use many third-party plugins, and these included data tables, group chat, date time figure, as well as um, UCI's own web auth secure login. We also use Twitter's type of plugin for our search searches. Developing Zoofrace was a valuable opportunity for our team to develop life skills and technical skills that we could bring into our careers as we graduate from UCI. For example, this project was something that was much bigger than we had ever worked on before, so we needed to learn <coughs> the importance of prioritizing tasks and delegating these tasks to our team members so that we wouldn't become individually overwhelmed. This led to a need for clear and timely communication so that each team member was on the same page and that we were on track as a team and in time for our project. Um, under the Agile system, we had to learn to set goals on a two-week basis and sometimes we had to learn to set failure as well because we would set the bar too high for ourselves and become overwhelmed. And at the end, we learned to find the sweet spot between too much and too little. As we met with our sponsors on a new weekly basis, we also got a lot of sponsor feedback. And we had to learn to process this feedback and implement it in a feasible way with the limited amount of time we had. And finally, we had to learn about the importance of lunch. As our team meetings took place during lunchtime, our team members didn't always have time to eat lunch, and they would sometimes come to the team meetings angry. 
So in order to preserve the party, we set aside our project, sat down, and ate lunch. All right, that's up. Thank you so much. I'll be right to you. Technology that they're using backing up the cryptocurrency as well as potential users. 
for that cryptocurrency. Uh, ultimately, with that user-friendly uh, website, we want to create an intuitive learning process for the user to have more to an informed uh, decision in investing into cryptocurrencies. So to give you a little overview of our projects uh, thus far, uh, we actually decided to change uh, our, the direction of where we're going from last quarter to this quarter. So we were under a quarter timeline to finish our project. Uh, what we decided to do was go into the cryptocurrency area, uh, so we had to start fresh, and we were under a very tight schedule. So we were rapidly creating mockups, creating the whole UI UX experience, and we decided to go with our React JX uh, application that worked with Google data uh, and information for new users. So throughout the course of the project, and like Mauro mentioned, we only had one quarter to actually complete this. Um, so one thing that we were actually really restricted on was time, and because of that, we had to really learn on how to uh, limit our functional requirements and kind of just limit it to the core features instead of kind of having a lot of scope creep and trying to overachieve uh, throughout the quarter. Another thing that we actually learned was new frameworks, such as React. We started using tools such as Jenkins. We started using AWS to actually host our application as well. Another thing that we uh, ran in the middle of the quarter was actually our design. So. We didn't necessarily have a user defined at the very beginning. We ran into problems actually trying to create this for two different users. One for somebody who was new and easy to the uh, cryptocurrency world as well as advanced users. So we really had to narrow down that idea to one user to actually continue our design. So thank you very much. And our booth is actually over here to the right. and forced marketer to understand each customer as an, as an individual within 80 months. What's that, code? What's that code means to us? It means big data become more and more important in this market. And it's easily to find that more and more people start to mention big data in their real life. But does everyone know big data? Does everyone know how important it is? The answer is no. So that's why Arigami coming to the market to help those companies actually understand those data, providing customized reports, and integrating BI tools for them. The bad thing is that in the meantime, they never have a platform for, for their clients to communicate with the cooperation. That's why we are here as a team, to help them building a bridge between the cooperation and their clients. So let's move to the next slide to see what is the bridge and how we build it up. So we have separated the project into two parts. The first part is the web app where we communicate the, with the clients, show them how the data can help them um, improve their performance, and fit into the current Adagami, and we design and develop the whole web app. And to help new users understand what about the new web app, we have built uh, alongside the web app, a corporate website, where we introduce the new web app to our new users so that they can understand what new features are added into the new platform. Uh, so for web application, we have deployed a web application, and the user can sign up, log into their web application. Of course, they can change their account settings, and the user should be able to make connections uh, to the database so that the user can read all the data, the data dashboards. And uh, we, for the design, we call it a materialized design, which is consistent with the corporate website. So for the corporate website, uh, we have a design which is based on the old uh, Gabby website. We also follow the material design to make it uh, to be consistent with the web app. Um, the major change in our design is uh, we making the website more user friendly. So, for example, we have different sections to introduce our product, and we also, uh, when we care about our users feedback, so we create a section, uh, a section called compact, compact sections receive the feedback. Alright, so as for lessons learned, looking back, we try to follow agile software development as much as possible, iterate, build things really quickly, and then get some feedback as soon as possible. 
Um, we tried to have one communicator slash project manager, and she kind of took care of everything. We communicated everything up to the team for our sponsor. Um, we tried to avoid scope creep and not bite off more than we could chew so that we can create a more of a complete product in the end. And um, yeah, just bringing problems to the table, asking questions and learning as quickly as possible and being as transparent as possible. And you know, looking back throughout our college careers, this class is definitely the most, uh, like, most like the real world compared to the real world. So thank you to Cyrus, our sponsor. Thank you to Professor Azim for, and everyone else who helped make this um, this class such an enjoyable experience. Okay, so that's pretty, uh, pretty much our uh, presentation. And this is our booth, so come to visit us to see what is the bridge. So one more team to go. After this team, they actually have some uh, pre-made videos that they made. I'm going to run those videos, but then because we have uh, only nine presentations today. Uh, I will say also a few words before we start rolling those videos. Since I'm a teacher, I'm giving homework to all the current sponsors. Think of something to say about your experience after we finish with the last team that you want to share with everyone else who's here. Um, but only positive. <laughs> My name is Kian, and these are my teammates, Eleanor, Gustavo, and Katrina. Over the last 20 weeks, we have been working on Time for Children. Time for Children holds the promise of improving the lives of millions of young children with language-based learning differences. Picture a three-year-old who cannot communicate at a three-year-old level with her family, teachers, or doctors. Imagine the daily frustration, frustrations felt by everyone involved. Imagine the potential dangers faced by this child who cannot fully articulate her feelings or needs. Using Time for Children, a family of games, pediatricians can quickly and easily screen for language-based learning differences. When results suggest that a child might have a language difference, the pediatrician can refer the child to a speech therapist, who <coughs> early intervention has the highest chances of success. Time for Children was first conceived by Dr. Stephanie Rook in 2015. When through her work, she noticed that there were a number of children with previously unrecognized communication difficulties. From this, she envisioned a mobile application that would serve as an objective screening tool for language-based learning differences at annual pediatric checkups. The current culmination of this vision consists of a series of mini-games that can screen for these language differences. These are the tools and skills used to create our game, so all the designs and all the assets were made using Adobe Illustrator, and the development team used Xcode and SpriteKit to put the game together. In addition, all the code is hosted on GitHub, which is also used to, um, for collaboration between the developers as well. And for UI testing, um, they use a lot of the prototyping tools as well as usability testing and prototyping just to um, make sure the game is usable. So the first thing that we learned this, this last two quarters is that the Agile approach really is as advantageous as we were told. Getting our game deployed onto an iPad early on helped to facilitate discussions about scope and requirements. Next, we also learned that um, creating a comprehensive design document really helped to facilitate um, conversations about planning and scope. We also learned that incorporating a detailed spreadsheet into our project planning sped up production and helped to ensure an even distribution of workload. Finally, we learned that even simple user tests can uncover usability errors, which helped us improve the quality of the game and, un and reduce bugs. Over the course of 20 weeks, our team was able to achieve the completion of three, a series of, a series of three games, a coloring game, a monster game, and a our designer was able to create dozens of unique assets that can be found throughout the entire suite of games. Uh, through our user testing, we were able to gain valuable feedback that was able to influence uh, changes that we made to the game. And our development team was able to create from scratch a working functional um, set of code that can be worked, built upon in future iterations. Our booth is located over in this corner, and thank you for your time.
Thank you again to all the teams. So like I said, we have a few minutes before we rearrange the room and um, kick everybody out. But we're kicking you out to a good place, a place that has food <laughs> and sunlight and all kinds of great things. But before that, since we have a few minutes, um, I want to do a couple of things. First of all, I can answer any questions that uh, any of friends and family, uh, any of the guests has about uh, the class, uh, the Agile process that was mentioned a few times, and things of that nature. And I also want to hear from, let's say, at least three existing sponsors, sponsors who are finishing the process today about their experiences. So maybe we can start with those. And now I've talked to some of you about doing this. So who's ready? Jeff? Yeah. Right. You can stand up. All right, I'll just stand up. So I'm Jeff Quiet, Team Jeff. I love that they made it all about me. But, but, but I have to say one thing negative. The shirts, they didn't do the Team Jeff shirts like those. So the grades go down a little. But otherwise, it's awesome. So I just want to tell you guys, so... Yeah, um, that, that, that was the sponsor that gave them the trip. The sponsor Paul? <laughs> 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 yeah, he's there. Hey, Ari, it's nice to see you. No problem. Nice to see you again. Don't blame him. So Ari, Ari is a good guy. He has to work on his soft skills as well. I love, I love the friendships. <laughs> the the no, no, no. So let me, let me just tell you. So when Professor Ziv and I got together to talk about doing this, um, I speak all over the country. <coughs> college kids on soft skills and networking and connecting. And we talked about using this AI and machine learning because I'm a big fan of what it can do. And we wanted to bring these guys out of their comfort zone. We wanted to make it so that they got into something that was, you know, we started this process over a year ago. These guys got involved six or seven months ago. Nobody was really talking about AI and machine learning as publicly as it is a year later. And so when we first sat down with them, it was awesome to see how they didn't know anything but they were open to the experience. And the other thing I'll share with you is, none of them picked me. None of them wanted to do this project. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because it actually made it better. Because I watched them through the first quarter um, really struggle to figure it out. And one of, the, one of the other things we talked about was making it so that they actually struggled. And we put it in small two-week bites. And it's funny how, how <coughs> Professor Zibs group was talking about that two week, you know, don't don't get them too far ahead. And so we really tried to keep them in the two week process. And by the way, they didn't share this, but I know nothing about technology. I know how to use it because people teach me. And so having people to understand my vision and take it and put it on paper and then put it into an app was pretty awesome. And watching them go from first quarter really trying to figure it out and, and then by second quarter accepting that they had to make it happen regardless because otherwise it wasn't going to work well. They made it happen and as a team. Every one of them advanced and, and grew. And by the way, they now can say they work on an AI machine learning project. And it's going to be awesome for them to get a job. So thank you, guys. That was Jeff on Team Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, Will, or Matt? Somebody go? Yep. All right, I'm Will from Team Neogenomics. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from this was, it was kind of my first experience to sit on the other side of the room and manage a team. So I think that's a good takeaway uh, for anybody out there. I also went through a capstone project similar to this about six years ago. Um, so it is near and dear to my heart. Uh, this is a big transitional point in all you guys' lives. Uh, so we want to kind of help with that, some of the soft skills, um, interviews, all that stuff coming up. So that was the two big takeaways. Thank you. Well, that's a usable project. You, you guys also develop something that our pathologists are going to use. Mm -hmm. So it isn't something that is just what, it's just a standalone. You did it for a class. You know, one day you're you're going to see this if you're in medicine. It'll be out there. It will be yours. And that's Bob of you too. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Matt. If I identify and. Um, I was, it was a great learning experience for me. I spent the first 20 or 25 years trying to get out of school, and the next 20 trying to get back in with Dr. Zim. <laughs> so thank you for uh, accepting us. But um, yeah, I met great relation, great guys, our team, and uh, it was just re it was rewarding for me in uh, the process. The first time we met, 
we met for a beer here at the Village Pub, and they just stared at me while I had a beer, so we stopped meeting for beers. But <laughs> we had a great time, and we got some really uh, cost-effective prototypes, and they did a fantastic job. My name's Dustin, I'm here with SendGrid. Um, this was actually my first time that I got to do anything like this. Uh, so it was really cool being on the other side of the table, helping people out, because you know, we've all been in your guys' shoes before. Um, so we really appreciate all the work that you've done, and um, you know, on my behalf, and I'm sure all the other sponsors feel the same way as well. Um, yeah, thank you guys very much for your argument. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My team was just so uh, awesome. They didn't even create their own, own name. Now I'm seeing the poster, I'm like, that's my team. <laughs> um, so I'm a second year PhD uh, student in the Department of Informatics. And then I, prior to starting the program, I was a speech therapist myself. So it's amazing to see these uh, mobile applications for good were designed by students who have a heart to serve students. and. Uh, Two um, developers in my team had no idea um, utilizing iOS, and they just pick it up through the, over the past two quarters and deliver a really cool game. I strongly encourage all of you to uh, check it out. And also, um, just working with this fascinating team really helped me grow as a um, future researcher, just seeing that um, the different aspect of design and development and user testing all come together in our team in such a smaller time especially um, each individual members of uh, our group member went through a lot of personal challenges in their own family life outside of this. So um, just knowing that um, all these hard work are being supported and hopefully being transferred. Um, this is the second uh, year there um, this project is being worked on. So uh, I also appreciate the Capstone project allowing the sustainable development in this specific marginalized community where we don't really have a lot of tension. But hopefully, um, good research will really help us support um, these um, research works. Thank you. If you want, you don't get the Hi, everybody. My name is Cyrus Dallimor. I'm with Adagami. And I just wanted to actually use this opportunity to thank the team one more time for um, the project that uh, they helped us with. We, um, you know, as Kelly mentioned, we have a back end um, system that we, we don't really have a front end. So we, we do have clients, but we don't have a way to really um, uh, help them with the, with the visual aspect of the product. And um, this actually, <clears throat> doing this project I mean, taught me a, a few things, first of all, because I haven't been in school for such a long time that I uh, quickly remembered the, um, how intense it is to be uh, in school with the scheduling and everything. Like that, so I really appreciate everybody showing up on time every week. We actually had weekly meetings, sometimes by weekly meetings, and everybody was there on time and very prepared. Um, so it, it went really well. We, you know, we are definitely going to use this product, and again, I really appreciate it. It was a great experience. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, yes. Um, so I'm with uh, Time for Children, but um, as faculty in the School of Education, we talk about interdisciplinarity all the time. But actually, these projects show how useful it really is. So as a psychologist, I can say, oh, if we just had an app that did that, I don't know how to design it. I can tell you how kids would use it. They can design an app, but they don't know how a kid's going to hold the screen and tap it and mess everything up. Um, so it's really fun to have these kind of opportunities to really use our disciplinary systems together. So it's really enjoyable. Any questions for me about the agile process or any other mysteries of the class? I have a question about sort of what's the scope? Like, is it anything technological? Like, what's the, is there a, a narrow, uh, like working with nonprofits or other groups on campus, is there a way to guide them for capstones or some parameters that this capstone course could address or not? Because it's such a diversity of topics that we've heard today. The scope is contact Professor Zip. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but But the, the real answer is great question, first of all, and thank you. We, we, we do take a wide range of projects on purpose to, to really cover a wide range of skills and also, since you mentioned nonprofit organizations, a wide range of 
sponsors. Even in today's class, I think there were enough examples of corporate sponsors, sort of individual Maverick projects, and some things that either came from within UCI or related to UCI Medical School or the School of Education. Uh, we have a couple more projects today that are represented by poster only, so please make sure to visit those as well. That's why we have nine presentations and 11 posters, as I'm sure, I'm sure all of you have noticed. And so the two remaining posters are from, uh, from the fourth quarter class with Professor Emily Navarro, who's here as well. And they're kind of representing the conclusion of that class. And they were also, one was based on a, on a, on a medical type uh, situation using a game for medical rehabilitation and uh, things of that nature. So please check those posters and those uh, demo stations as well. We take a, a wide range of sponsors. And the projects, we look at them more of is the size and scope of comparable size and comparable scope as opposed to what is actually the technical challenge. So, so the technical challenge can be from a wide range of sources. Uh, if you looked at the SendGrid project, it had almost no UI and no user interaction, but very complicated algorithms in computer science, all the way to projects who were very heavy on design or very heavy on user experience and much less sort of under the hood coding. And, and we, we, we accommodate the whole range. Does that make sense? All right. So final logistics for the next stage. Uh, we really would like all the guests to uh, actually network with each other, like Ari and Jeff just demonstrated. <laughs> We would like more of that to happen uh, outside where there's more food and more sunlight. So I'm sending you out there. I'm asking the students, uh, those with uh, young and able bodies, to stay in for about five minutes and help me stack up the chairs and move them to an outside area. Then we come back here at 5.30 to visit the demonstration. Can I also? Yes. I just was thinking, so a little bit of a plug in to that class, uh, which I have the pleasure to probably uh, uh, be part of or in a way to uh, run around town and tell people about that. I think the first team that I came here to this class with was uh, about 10 years ago from the museum in Seal Beach. And once I got the uh, idea of this class, I've been promoting and advocating for this class for the last 10 years. And I think companies like from Google, all the way to Garage Startup Jeff. Came, uh, <laughs> yes, came, came to this class. And I've been coming to those uh, showcases. And I can't say enough on how uh, meaningful and, and impactful this class is uh, when I talk to other companies that either gone through that. I mean, uh, M2 Catalyst, for example, have been going into this class, what, three, four years in a row. So people really like it. So my plug-in here for the I know that everyone is here, adults, but for the adults in the room, is to also share with friends and, and, and others so uh, the, the uh, rumor of this uh, secret will seep out uh, to more, more sources. Thank you, Arjun.